Okay, you guys. So, wanted to recap what we did in our waltz class. It was a lot. Uh, first, um, congratulations for sticking with it. We said up front that it was going to be a lot, and it was. And um, it's going to take some work to be a good waltz dancer. And I just want all of you to realize that people that become good waltz dancers, when you watch people and you're like, wow, they can really waltz, they have spent years, there's people in this other room right now that have spent years trying to perfect how to dance waltz just decently. And so what we did in one month's time was quite remarkable. I'm proud of you. What well, Lisa went over with you guys in those weeks three and four while I was out of town, um, adding on and then revisiting what you did. Just remember that all you need is a right and a left turn, okay? Enough said. All you need is a right and a left turn. And so going down this wall, remember that we're always working on diagonals. And so the first thing that we would do is go into a twinkle if we're going to turn right. If I'm facing diagonal wall, meaning at the angle toward the wall, not at the angle toward the center, which is diagonal center, I have to do a right turning action of some sort. And we did a twinkle. One, two, three. Now the twinkle has been beat up over and over and over so many times in such a bad way. Um, that it makes it seem like it's impossible to do. I just want you to remember that I am just taking a step forward, a second step forward between her feet, and I'm walking past people on a crowded sidewalk. And that's basically how you're doing in getting to promenade position. Uh, because of the bronze syllabus in ballroom waltz, it became very static. Stop the girl, pull her over, turn, and try to go to promenade. And it's just not necessary, and it's not really what you're after when you go to social dance waltz. I don't know. I'm afraid that we might be out. And so uh, I'm going to step towards her, step between her feet again, turn my shoulders, and we both landed in promenade position. From here, we do what's called a natural turn. So I have to get past my partner before swinging to the outside of the floor. This is the first half of a right box for the man, and really what is considered to be a link for the lady because Lisa's going to take three steps forward but she's going to turn her heart which is now facing diagonal center to diagonal wall because i'm going to be on that side of her four five six so even though she's stepping forward she's just turning her heart to face me and you notice leaders that i got outside of her i did not stop myself at single file which we often do so i made it to outside partner on this other side so that was the four five six common mistake that guys make when you get to your six is that you'll keep turning and so you guys get started turning and keep turning and then the lady can't get past you going into the one so you really just want to go backwards on your six and i'll repeat that in just a second if i'm going to do a right turn and this is really essential if i'm going to do a right turn i need a flat spot on my two so what i'm going to do is i'm going to back out i'm going to brush my ankles and back out diagonal wall backing diagonal wall and i'm going to dance sideways and when i dance that sideways on my two that gets lisa to continue backwards when she does her three and again i'm going to be just outside partner when i get there if there's too much rotation here and this is super common if there's too much rotation here and I keep pulling her that way, all the girls at the club, when you're social dancing with them, are going to want to flip that around and take that to promenade so it becomes difficult for you guys to stay in that right turn position. And it's that flat sideways too that enables her to go, oh, I can distinguish the difference between when he's going to do a heel turn and take this to the center of the room and go to promenade or if he's going to continue in that right turn action. So I'll do that again. So if I just do these first few bars, this goes one, two, three, get past her, four, outside of her, don't turn the six, back out of the driveway, one, sideways, two, and three. And if we had more straightaway here, which I'll just go ahead and take it down this new wall, I could continue doing that, four, five, straight back, six, one, sideways, two, three, four, five, six, and that goes to show you again that anytime you get to the corners at the end of the floor, you can continue to do right turns all the way around the room, okay? So anything that finishes with you facing diagonal wall has to be a right turning action of some sort. You cannot turn left if you're facing the wall. And because we're moving counterclockwise around the room, right turn is the option. So don't lose heart because you've done three of them and go, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and come out because I did three of those and I'm bored. You're gonna find yourself stuck doing a left turn on the wrong part of the floor, making it difficult for the lady to make it around you on the other side. That being said, that was a twinkle into continuous right turns essentially. 
In the first week, we did a left turn. I had you go ahead and start facing diagonal center. So when you go to do this left turn right here, I want you leaders to remember that you're taking a step in a straight line and taking your right shoulder towards your left foot. So I'm taking a step in a straight line and taking my right shoulder towards my left foot when I do that. Big mistake that guys make turning left is that you'll take a step legs apart to the left and now I can't get past Lisa. So if I go here, I can't, I can't get past her. And it's because you sent her off of your path by turning your shoulders and then you dance behind her and you're still behind the eight ball. So instead, think about taking a step straight ahead and turning your shoulders and now you can get right past the lady, no problem. Just distinguishing that difference so you can see it straight from the camera will act as though we're going diagonal center because this is how it would start, but I want you to see it from this perspective. So I'll go forward and turn gears of a watch and take my right shoulder towards my left foot. That's contra. So I'm going forward with my left, taking my right shoulder forward. What we tend to do is go like this, but that's where the lady is going and now we can't get past her. So try to do that in a straight line and turn your right shoulder towards your left foot. So as we did on the right turn, now I'm going to go forward side back on that side. It's going to have that flat spot and I'm going to turn my shoulders again like I'm going down a busy sidewalk. When I get here, like I did on the four, five, six, I'm not going to over rotate. I'm going straight backwards. And now she is moving forward in a straight line with her heart turned towards me. So she wouldn't have her heart turned way over there. Her partner's over here. And then from here, as I go to get out of the way, I'm going to back across her path while having her move forward. So now it's her turn to do exactly what we said a minute ago. So she's not going to race me and you ladies are going, oh, he's going over there. So you want to step legs apart and now you can't get past the dude. So we're going to back across the lady as she goes between our feet, four, sideways, five, swing that sideways, and then naturally six, which makes us finish facing diagonal wall. So whereas we can do right turns continuously around the room, you cannot really do left turns continuously around the room. And everybody's like, well, why not? Why can't I do that? The answer is because we're moving counterclockwise around the room. So what happens is guys want to do more than left turn. They're like, well, I can do multiple right turns. Why can't I do multiple left turns? Because it doesn't get her around to facing diagonal center again. And so we'll force that. And there's just really no reason to force it. So at the end of this left turn in week one, we went one, two, three, and four, five, six, and we landed outside partner. And what do we say earlier? If you're facing diagonal wall, you must do a right turning action. So I would do a twinkle. I start this differently than the first one, outside partner and just slip over between her feet. And then we go to promenade on that three. And here we are again, going back to right turn, right? now. If, we'll get a little closer to the camera. If we have room, and usually I would reserve, usually I would reserve this for the long wall. I would set up a left turn on the long wall. If I happen to come out of the very start of the corner on the short wall, short walls and long walls, on the short wall, I can negotiate doing a left turning action toward the center of the room and still have room to work my way out to the rest of the corner and do a right turning action out of there. But if you come out and you're halfway down the short wall and you do a left turn right here, I do have an answer for you on that, but you've painted yourself in a corner and you're going to find it's going to be very hard to negotiate getting out of the corner when you do that. So only if we come right out of the corner facing diagonal center would I attempt to do a left turn on the short wall. Otherwise, I'll do my right turns through there and then I'll fix it over the here on the long wall and go into a left turn. So once we got to backwards um, off of the, um, the link, we did a left turn, left turn, and that left is facing diagonal wall. Then from here, I'm going to go one, two, three to the natural turn we did earlier. And now instead of me going back one sideways, two and three, because I want to continue to do a right turn, continuous right turn right here. I'll back out with the same amount of authority, but bring my heels together. Whoa, that brought Lisa around me and she feels caught. We talked about that being like a hammer throw. And so I, I'm a, I throw her out and oh, she's tied to me and it pulls us to the inside of the floor. So what's gonna happen is she's gonna dance past me. She's gonna feel caught, one, two, and then I control that we step out facing diagonal center. So I didn't do that flat spot on my two, so we're unable to continue with a right turning action. 
I am about to start my four, five, sixes with my right foot and her left. This is what we call a link. And it's a, a, what that means is if I'm going to turn left, I have to start that left turn moving forward with my left foot. I am on the wrong foot currently at this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward from promenade and I'm simply going to turn to close. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to go four, five, six. That's it. For Lisa, what's going to happen for her is I change my body from promenade on the five. That makes her transition to backwards. We call this a link. In my opinion, it's how all ballroom dancing should have been taught. Just in my opinion. If you go to a ballroom studio, they're going to make you do a chasse right there and do a four-step bar right there. I think that is way too early for people to learn and you don't see people doing it successfully anyway. And so we use a three-step bar right there. That way we get to stay within the rules of what the country circuit wanted us to do by not syncopating that right there. And it switches me now having my left foot free facing the center of the room to do a left turn, which will bring me back out to diagonal wall. And then from here, if I want to, I could do a one-two twinkle and fall back in on the long wall. And you can see that even with us knowing what we're doing, this short wall in this room is almost too short to execute a left turn and have natural space. And so we had to change our twinkle that would have gone one, two, three. So if you saw that on a straight wall, if we changed our twinkle one, two, three, I ended up having to collect her on that twinkle, stop her and change the vector of her three to be able to dance out of that corner. Something that I talked about you in, with you on week five was what you can do over there. Not everybody on the floor can hold the perimeter of the room when they do waltz when you're out social dancing at the country bars. And so if you'll do a left turn, a left box, I will dance and let a couple that's moving down the floor go past me so that I give more, myself more room to negotiate that. And I do that often because uh, oftentimes when you're out there dancing waltz well, um, the people that aren't, they want to crowd you and race you and do all kind of stuff. It's this weird phenomenon that happens. So this is your left turn, left turn into a right turn with a natural turn and a heel turn to go back to left turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, twinkle, two, three, and four, five, bring my feet together, one, two, three, headed back to the center of the room, left turn, two, three and four five oh crap i painted myself in a corner if i do a box one two three four oh it sets me up on the new wall one two three four five six and out those are primarily what you what you want to get good at if you can do left and right turns successfully and waltz you are dancing good waltz the other stuff is just a bonus on top of that so i'm going to pause this video here that's probably the first part of what you really need to understand you need to do well um, and i'll go ahead and add on the next piece in the next video